Number 62, Integrated Concepts. The 70 kilogram swimmer in figure 7.43 starts a race with an initial velocity of 1.25 meters per second and exerts an average force of 80 newtons backward with his arms during each 1.8 meter long stroke. Letter A. What is his initial acceleration if water resistance is 45 newtons? All right, so let's just uh, draw a free body diagram over here. Now it says that, uh, let's just assume he's moving uh, in the right-handed direction. All right, so the velocity is pointing to the right. They told us that the velocity initially here is going to be 1.25 right, meters per second. And uh, he exerts an average force of 80 newtons backward, right, with his arm. But the thing is, that force he's exerting backward on the water, but guess what the water is doing on him, right? It's exerting the equal but opposite force. So therefore, the vector here should be to the right. Remember, uh, remember Newton's third law, and also remember that we're concerned with forces acting on the swimmer, not by the swimmer. All right. Now, um, so this is 80 newtons. Okay. And therefore, if his velocity is to the right, and there is some resistance here, resistance always opposes the motion, and therefore it's pointing in the other direction. And that resistance, they told us, was going to be 45, 45 newtons. Okay. And um, so now they want to know what is the initial uh, acceleration here. Well, I think we can easily find that, right? If we think about the sum of the forces in the x direction being equal to ma, x, right? What are the forces here? Well, there's a positive 80 and a negative 45. So therefore, it's the sum of the forces would be 80 minus 45, right? Is equal to the mass of the object, which is 70 kilograms, all multiplied by a. So divide that side by 70, divide that side by 70, and guess what we find? we find the acceleration in that x direction. So 80 minus 45, divide that by 70. And here we have exactly 0.5, right? So 0 0.500 meters per second squared. That will be the initial, av uh, what do they say? Initial acceleration, okay, in the x direction. So now let's take a look at letter B. So now letter B says, what is the subsequent average resistance force from the water during the five seconds it takes him to reach uh, his top velocity of 2.5 meters per second? All right, so again, um, we can draw another free body diagram here, right? Uh, he's still applying 80 newtons, okay? That hasn't changed, all right? So the 80 newtons here is pointing to the right, 80, 80 newtons. Uh, still experiencing a velocity in the right-hand direction, although there is an acceleration, right? So let me, not instead of writing the velocity, there, let me write that the acceleration, there is a value here. We just don't know what it is yet, okay? Um, actually, I mean, we could find it, right? Remember, acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And they told us that the initial velocity is 1.25, the final velocity is 2.50, and it takes five seconds to go from 1.25 to, uh, excuse me, to 2.5. So uh, we can just plug in these values, right? So let's just plug them in, 1.25, all divided by then five seconds. So this actually would be the acceleration. So 2.5 minus 1.25, all divided by five, and we get 0 0.25, right? 0 0.25. Okay, so the acceleration now is less, right? Than it was initially. All right, so just keep that in mind. So now we know the acceleration, but we are, we are asked to find the average resistance force. So therefore, this force now must have changed, right? If, if now we have an acceleration that is less than what we had over here, and the applied force is still the same, that means the resistive force must have changed. All right, so let's just call this the force due to resistance. So now I can use the same equation that the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mAx. And it's 80 newtons minus the force due to the resistance is equal to his mass of 70 kilograms multiplied by our new acceleration of 0.25, right? So now all I need to simply do is really what I'll do is I'll bring, uh, you know, add this term on over to this, on, on over to the right-hand side, and then subtract this value from the right-hand side and bring it on over to the left. Okay, and when we do that, we get that the resistive force is, this is the math, 80 minus 70 times 0.25, 62.5.
62.5, and that's in terms of newtons. And that's what we should have expected, right? If the acceleration went down, then the resistive force must have gone up, right? It was 45 uh, in, in case A, and now it's 62.5. All right. And then letter C, discuss whether water resistance seems to increase uh, linearly with velocity. So let's see, um, discuss whether water resistance seems to increase linearly with velocity. So um, no, it does not actually, right? I mean, if we notice the velocity, it doubled, right? It was initially at 1.25. And then in the final case here, the velocity was 2.5. So the velocity doubled. But what did the um, resistive force do? Well, the resistive force went from 45 to then 62.5. Right, so it's not a linear relationship, okay? They didn't increase proportionally the same. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. And uh, if this video helped you out at all, hit that like button too, that would be awesome. I'd appreciate it so very much. And um, I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.